once you get down the Bernini rabbit hole, I'm telling you, you will not be able to pull yourself out. This was one of the sculptures, which was commissioned by the Borghese family, a very wealthy family in Rome. They had ties to the papacy, both Pope Paul V was a Borghese, many famous cardinals were Borghese's, and they were very into the um, commissioning uh, and perpetuation of the arts. And thank God, you know, people love to in America go, oh, all these rich people and commissioning, you know, the arts, they should have given all that money to the poor. Okay, point taken, obviously people need to be helped, but thank God there was so much of, of these commissions because we are left with these eternal fantastic gifts. And here's one of them. This is called the abduction of Persephone. I mentioned that he was, Bernini was commissioned to do sculptures, not just uh, Christ, uh, Christian in character, but also about Greek myths because in the time of the Renaissance, it was pulling from the past and especially Greek and Roman antiquity. And so this one, as I said, is called the abduction of Persephone, also sometimes called the rape of Persephone, but actually the more accurate translation is the abduction. And it comes from this Greek tale where Pluto, who was the god of the dead, and he rules over the land of Hades, which is the land of the dead, abducts Persephone, who is the daughter of Zeus, who's very beautiful. And uh, Pluto wants to take Persephone back into the underworld for you know, him or for her to be his wife. And so she does not want to be abducted, obviously. And we see this fantastic moment of action and emotion in this sculpture. So here it is in full. By the way, these are my photos that I, I took in, in the Borghese Villa. Let's zoom in on the thigh of uh Pluto. Look at that thigh. This is sculpture. This was made out of a huge block of granite. You know, I, I really think the, and I've talked about this on, on this show and on Dennis and Julie, I didn't always appreciate art and sculpture. When my mom would take me to museums growing up, I would sit in that like center area and kick my legs and roll my eyes and want to leave. I have since fallen in love with great art and, and sculpture and even tapestry I discovered in Rome, fantastic tapestry. And I really think the key to it is appreciation of what the artist had to do to create that work. And we look here, starting with a huge block of marble, chiseling it away and making the human body look so realistic. Look at those veins, those muscles. I mean, it, it is perfectly done as a human body really is and even more than that you get this profound sense of movement i mean pluto is carrying persephone and we get this sense that he is lunging forward those muscles that are bulging gives this sense of of great movement and action i'm so jealous of you uh to i'm see jealous that of person, me too you, your, your your pictures do it justice but and, and you said granite, but it's marble, right? This is made from a block of marble. Think oh, about did I the say granite? It's marble. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Think about the amount of time it took to create this. The, the linen looks like linen. The muscles look like yes. muscles. And the hardest thing about a statue is the negative space, the space where there isn't anything, like that arm sticking up there, the balance of all of that to not crumble or break. And if you make one mistake... Exactly. It, if you made so one beautiful. mistake, you can't, you, you either have to like make the body smaller or you, you can't just super glue on another piece of, of marble onto that. But that thigh, the movement of that thigh, the twisting, as you say, Sean, of the bodies while making it, um, the, the anatomy of the human body perfect as it is twisting the drapery and look at that there's there's folds in that drapery do you know how hard that is to do and by the way as much as this is an artistic feat it is also a structural feat because this marble is incredibly heavy so he has to be very discerning and careful with how much drapery how much is chiseled weighing it utterly spectacular and look at uh, persephone's feet they're so delicate they look exactly like human feet Ah, oh, look at look at the arm and the vein 
running across the arm, the different muscles. I mean, I the pictures don't even do it justice. I would go up and look at the way that Bernini would do the um, elbow and the ankle. And like those, you have your elbow, but then you have that little bone next to your elbow. He did those so well, just spectacular. Let's look at perhaps the best and most famous part of this sculpture, the hand. That is the hand of Pluto grabbing Persephone's thigh. Look at that imprint. That is so hard to do. And yet incredibly realistic. Also her hair. Yes, that's a great zoom in. Her hair, if we zoom back out, we can see is twisting in the wind. It's not just that these bodies are in movement. You can get a sense that she's pushing off of him. He's lunging forward, but you get a sense that there's wind and the hair is like a corkscrew and flies back. Just exceptional. Another part of this piece is the three headed dog. And that's a uh, symbol or a character in, in uh, ancient Greek mythology, the three headed dog. That is so incredible. The hairs. I mean, th this is just spectacular work for him to so finely carve out those hairs and make them look realistic. And I got up so close and God bless the Borghese. They didn't bark at me. Usually at museums, you get too close. They really let you explore the, the sculpture. And I looked inside the mouth of the dog and Bernini even carved the ridges at the top of, of the mouth. He even carved the tongue perfectly. There was no inch of any of his work that was left without detail.